if you know my love of garden candy, this third one will surprise a lot of people, I think. Guten gardening, everybody. Do you have any vegetables that you grow every year in your garden? Like these are mainstays, but for whatever reason, you just decided this season either to grow way less or not grow them at all. I'm going to talk about a few that I really didn't grow much of this year and some of the reasons why. And I want to hear, especially in this video, in the chat, some of your rationale behind not planting some of the vegetables that I would say are probably, well, for most people, mainstays in the garden. And I'm going to start off with eggplant. Now, for the last couple of years, eggplant has been one of the most prolific vegetables in our garden. In fact, I would imagine that if you have some experience growing eggplant, you know that to be the case. That eggplant, I mean, if you take care of it, will produce pound after pound on each individual plant. And we've had years where I've probably harvested upwards of 100 pounds of eggplant, but this season I didn't start a single eggplant and I didn't plant a single eggplant in the garden. You see, as much as I enjoy eating eggplant, and I really do like eggplant, eggplant parm, uh, we've had stuffed eggplant so good, it turns out that not everyone in my family enjoys eggplant as much as I do. And so while we will likely go back to planting eggplant in the future, we took a year off. You know, tastes change, they develop over time. But one thing I don't want to do is to grow 100 pounds of eggplant and eat 10 pounds of it. And yes, we can blanch and freeze the rest personally. You could also can it. I, I don't really love the texture of eggplant when it's preserved, so I prefer to eat it fresh. But I'm not going to waste 90 pounds of vegetables when I could grow things like the beans that you see behind me when I know that our family will eat those a lot more readily. By the way, you want to see today's harvest of beans? Take a look at what I just pulled off here. Now maybe because eggplant is kind of hit or miss with most people, that's what I found. You either like it or, you know, maybe not. Maybe that's not as surprising that I didn't grow eggplant this season, but cucumber, on the other hand, might surprise you. Now I did plant a grand total of three cucumber plants. I only harvested a couple off there. And I love cucumber. And actually my family loves when we make refrigerator pickles. So this one wasn't so much about the fact that the family doesn't love cucumbers. In all honesty, I probably should have grown or planted a few more plants, but you know, cucumbers aren't exactly nutrient dense. And while they're delicious, they're over 90% water. So this was more of a decision based on nutritional value and the space that cucumbers take up. Now, next season, I'll likely come back to growing cucumbers because again, they are so good, especially from my point of view. I just take a little vinegar, a little bit of onions, drop those into a bowl and add the cucumbers sliced in there. Let them sit for 20, 30 minutes. Of course, you can go longer for refrigerator pickles, but um, I, I, my grandfather ate them that way. I ate them that way growing up and I absolutely love them. But this season, you know, we just didn't allocate space to the cucumbers. Again, not so much a, a taste issue this time, but our decision was grounded in the idea that our trellising would actually be taken up with other things that, again, like the beans. I keep coming back to the beans, but we grew more beans this season than we have in the past. And we've been reaping the reward of that, especially since I mentioned in a previous video, the Japanese beetles have really held off this season. So they're still looking fantastic hence the harvest for today. So I would say that over the past five or six years, certainly eggplant and cucumbers have been mainstays in our garden. But this third one, especially if you know my love of garden candy, this third one will surprise a lot of people, I think, and that is tomatoes. In total, I believe I planted about nine tomato plants in total this season, down from, I would say in the past 30, 40, 50 tomato plants in our garden. In fact, I allowed a couple of volunteer tomatoes to come up and I've just been out here harvesting them. No idea what variety they've volunteered year over year the last couple of years, some cherry tomatoes, some smaller red tomatoes. But every year I have dedicated a good amount of space in the garden to a variety of tomatoes. 
personal favorite, by the way, the mortgage lifter. Let me know if you've had the mortgage lifter in the past. It's so good. But this season, while I went ahead and started a few tomato plants, after consulting with my wife and talking through this a little bit, we said we have a lot of, especially cherry tomatoes, in the freezer. And those freezer cherry tomatoes, here, I'll try to show you a picture of some of our stockpile, if I can remember to do that during this video edit. Um, we have so many in our freezer downstairs. They last for a couple of years. We wanna use those up. And that's been our primary method of storage. Yes, we can make spaghetti sauce, tomato sauce, tomato juice, all those things. But we really didn't have the time this season, first of all, to do that. And secondly, we just didn't want to overload our freezer with more tomatoes. So to me, I'm almost as surprised as you are about this particular decision because again, I love tomatoes that much. I mean, what is better? Well, obviously every time I come out here in the garden and there are ripe tomatoes, I'm gonna eat some tomatoes. This is actually my favorite color of tomato for the cherry tomatoes to eat. Mm. But what is better than a sandwich with a fresh, thick slice of tomato on that sandwich? And I grew up on tomato sandwiches. You never had a tomato mayonnaise sandwich? <laughs> a big slab of... Anyway, so we decided not to grow a large number of tomato plants this season. Again, this one's not about nutrition. This one's not about taste. This one is about the fact that we have enough in our freezer to make it so that we don't need to actually grow them this year. Now, will we come back full force next year? Will we grow a lot more next year? Oh, I don't know, probably. I hope so. I really enjoy growing tomatoes. Um, but that is a third vegetable that again, I think most people, when you think of gardening, it, it, uh, like even beginner gardeners, when you think of gardening, what vegetables do you think of as a baseline? You probably think peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers. I mean, those are, those are pretty major. Eggplant might even be up there for a lot of people. But again, these are decisions we made this season in the garden. Did we get every bit of production that we would have liked out of the garden this season? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm out here right now harvesting some cabbage, um, harvesting some of those tomatoes, a ton of green beans, just getting those pieces out. We did harvest a ton of summer squash this year. And guess what? Next season, we will be growing fewer summer squash plants. For as much as I enjoy summer squash, I'd rather focus on the winter squash that stores a lot longer than the zucchini, the, the yellow early prolific straight neck squash, or the patty pan. Those patty pan, by the way, are really delicious. The white bush scallop patty pan um, have been fantastic, but we grew, I grew too many of them this season. So again, balancing that out is gonna be important. I gotta tell you, the idea for this video came as I was sitting out here harvesting all these beans and harvesting a few of these volunteer tomatoes and getting the rest of the tomatoes in. This is when the idea struck me that I wonder about that decision-making for a lot of other people. What goes into that for you? Is this decision to cut back unique? I don't think so. I think people change up their gardens year over year pretty often. I mean, for us, typically the changeover is experimenting with something new. And we have something like 15 varieties of potatoes that we're growing this season, trying a whole bunch of new different varieties there. I mean, that's usually where our change comes in beyond some of the staples uh, that we definitely can't get rid of, like our kale, that, that type of thing. But for you, where does that decision-making process lie? What does that process look like from your point of view in terms of what it is that you start, that you grow, that you decide on each season. This is a video where I'd love to hear from your personal experience, hear about it in the comments, and maybe let other people see your decision making because gardening is a lot about decision making. And so it's helpful to see through the eyes and through the thinking of other people. Well, folks, I hope this video stirred up some thoughts for you, maybe some considerations for what you're going to be planting next season. And again, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.